Jose Clemente Orozco was known for the revival Mexican painting in the 1920s. Jose Orozco is a Mexican muralist and was also known as Los Tres Grandes, meaning the Three Greats. Jose Clemente Orozco was born in Ciudad Guzman in Mexico in November 23, 1883. Jose was raised in Zapotán el Grande. It was a small city in Mexico where he grew up. In the book, The Americas by Wiseman Elizabeth, she said that Jose Clemente Orozco was one of the greatest painters of the 20th century. He was, he also watched Postada work. Jose Clemente Orozco went to San Carlos under Fabres. Jose Clemente went there to learn how to draw. Jose also gained ideas from France by Dr. Elt and then later on by Ramos Martinez. Around 1992, Orozco has begun to create murals. He tried to make the audience to see them in public buildings. The book, Painting the Revolution, State Politics and Ideology in Mexican Muralism by Carter Warren, she stated that not only is he a good painter, but once again Orozco is one of the most important muralists in Mexico. He was considered one of the best three in Mexico and was also known as Los Tres Grandes, as I mentioned in the beginning. Los Tres Grandes was David Alfaro, Siqueiros, Diego Rivera, and of course himself, Jose Clemente Orozco. Well, Los Tres Grandes were on the public walls of Mexico. That's how important they were and also called Los Tres Grandes. Rivera, Orozco, and Siqueiros and some other artists use mural as an instrument of social and cultural transformations. But Orozco was known for the muralists in Mexico in their civil war in 1920s through 1930s. The three greats worked on the mural in the United States. Orozco was known for his mural in the United States as well. Even though Orozco was known to help the revival of the Mexican mural painting, they've also had some conflicts during their career. Orozco was also known for being a political committed artist and promoted the political causes of peasants and workers. Not only that, but at Orozco at age 21, he lost his left hand while working with gunpowder to make fireworks. The doctors tried everything to save Orozco's left hand when he played with um, gunpowder during the Mexican independence, but later on they had to amputate it. Even though he lost his left hand, he did not stop drawing. In fact, that he started to build more murals and buildings to get attention. In 1923, Orozco married Margarita Valladares, and they also had three children. In 1927, Orozco left his family and moved to the United States and spent 10 years in the United States. Orozco's first mural in the United States was created for Pomona College in California. And of course, Orozco created Gods of the Modern World mural in New Hampshire and Dartmouth College. Dartmouth College is the ninth oldest institution of higher education in the United States. Dartmouth College is also an Ivy League school. One of Jose's most famous mural he painted is the mural Gods of the Modern of the World. The Gods of the Modern of the World 
is in Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire in the United States. The mural Gods of the Modern World is where Jose Orozco attacks the American educational system. And at times, the mural is also known as Stillborn Education. Jose painted the mural between 1932 and 1934. The media type of Gods of the Modern World is fresco. The skeletons in the mural Gods of the Modern World, or also known as Stillborn Education, are American educators. The skeletons, or the American educators, are grinning at the new delivered dead embryo to its mother. The skeleton, or the American educators, are wearing cap and gowns to show that they are American educators. The female skeleton is a mother who is giving birth to the baby skeleton. The female skeleton's lying stretch out on the stack of guns that turn to books. The background of the mural gods of the modern world is fire. That's why it's colored red and the reason why he put its fire is because it's destroying something great or something great of a property. In the gown of the skeleton, you could see some implied lines. Also, you could see some negative space in the background. Not only that, but you can see a lot of overlapping. For example, the lady skeleton and the texture in front of the lady. You can also see texture which is the door in front of the lady skeleton. You can also see some vertical lines around the books and around the skeleton's gown. Now, in 1934, Orozco returned to his wife and his country in Mexico. When Orozco came back to Mexico, he was really respected and was invited to paint the government palace in Guadalajara, Mexico. After that, Orozco met Gloria Campobello, a prima of Bayerina for the Mexico City Ballet. Within three years, he left his wife, Margarita, to live with Gloria. Orozco was living with Gloria in New York City, and they both had an affair, which it ended real quick. In 1946, Jose Orozco was living alone in Mexico because Campo Bello just left him. As sad and harsh as it sounds, in 1949, on September 7th, he died within sleep of heart failure at the age 65. When Orozco did all these years, he was not give up even though he lost his left hand, which can slow him down a lot. When Orozco attacked the American educational system by his artwork, Gods of the Modern World, he believed that the institution education is incapable. So by him attacking it somewhat inspired me because in my school it did not prepare me and I felt like I wasn't capable moving on later on with my education. So I couldn't go where I always wanted to go of that level of education. The artwork, what I made was me throwing old stuff from my old school into the trash and just simply moved on and yes i had a lot of ups and downs so and with all that i still and never gave up pop quiz orozco made a lot of murals 
But in the United States, what place did he do his first mural and what state? 